Ready, Doc? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Hi, baby. Well, we're back at the lake. It's up 18 inches from before. The day started out at 31 degrees, just below freezing. It's, uh, oh gee, about 10:15 in the morning, so it's already in the 40s. Uh, high temperature is mid to upper 40s, maybe 50. And uh, with the lake up, we're going to go ahead and check out all these little uh, tributaries that feed into here and see how far we can paddle up today. What a beautiful day out, eh? Ready to go play? Yeah, let's go play. Let's go play. Let's go play. Okay. This area of Indiana and Kentucky had a wind event that came through. It registered up to 80 mile per hour winds, which interestingly, hurricane force winds begin at category 1, 75 miles per hour. So I'm uh, curious to see what trees have fallen as a result of those very, very high winds. We are also experiencing very high water levels. Because in addition to the wind, just prior to the wind, we had two and a half inches of rain. And so the lake today is three feet above what I would normally see it at, and a foot and a half above what it was just one week ago. So I can already tell that some of the trees were pruned by the wind, as there are numerous branches in the water. gorgeous out here. So right up ahead it looks like an evergreen tree has fallen and partially into the waterway here. And I'm looking at a tree, looking at the trunk area, that looks like it also fell. I'm not sure if I'll be able to maneuver around that or not. Let's give it a, give it a go here. Nope, we're all blocked up. So between the hardwood tree that fell across and the evergreen, uh, we're pretty well blocked here. I do believe that is an eagle sitting in the branch of that tree. It flew in just a moment ago before I had the camera on. So we're going to slowly approach it. It is. Beautiful bird. Oh, 
this is the fishing dock, and it is partially underwater. And it looks like about 18 inches, maybe two feet underwater. That's pretty substantial. Yeah, this is another cove that we made our way up. took a minute and it uh, helps to uh, split some of that little wood uh, so that the core is open because that's where it's drier. Take a note at how clean this pot is. 
we'll cover that later on in the video as to how I'm able to maintain um, the cleanliness of this uh, pot even though it's going to get a lot of soot on it in the next two days. Now this is our coffee pot. Only cooked on it once. Pretty good layer of soot on it though. We'll uh, cover that a little bit later about how to clean that up. Well, it's that time to uh, clean this coffee pot. We're going to use Dawn soap, half a cup of vinegar, warm water. Watch how easy this is. And a green pad. That soot just comes right off. It's not magic, it's preparation. So what I did before I went out to camp, in fact what I did when I came back from my last camp trip, was I took Dawn dishwashing soap and I applied it to the dried coffee pot on the outside, smeared it around just like this, set it all on the counter and let it dry for four days. And then I bagged it up and it was ready to go. So what happens is the soot attaches to the soap and the soap releases with hot water and vinegar. Just like that. Nice clean pot. That's where I beached the boat so that Laura and R and I could look at the spillway and put that on film. This is the man-made levee. And that's the other end because that water's flowing really fast.
So there's my campsite with this water being up. It is really visible from the water. Very unusual. Normally you'd have to look up, but this water's way up. La Renar and I are at camp. We paddled every little alcove of the lake. Took us like two and a half hours. The boat is up because I don't need to paddle anymore today. I need to set up camp. So, already pulled the boat up. There's my bags. So I pulled them out of the boat and then just walked them about eight paces and set them against the lock so they wouldn't roll back down. So the advantage of the water being as incredibly high as it is, I don't have to move the bags nearly as far. <laughs> Yay for us. I got my house set up and uh, I want some ramen soup rather than wait and tend to fire for half an hour use a cotton ball with petroleum jelly on it drop it into my stick stove here and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little stick stove fire already got some water in the coffee pot no grounds in it because I'm not having coffee yet And we'll get this started because this will kick up in about two to three minutes and uh, save me quite a bit of time. Not that I'm in any hurry, but I don't feel like tending a fire right now. We still have about three and a half hours of sunlight, and Laura and I was taking a full out nap. She's a little We did a couple of adventure hikes yesterday in the rain prior to the heavy winds starting, and uh, plus, she got a shower yesterday, and that always wears her out a little bit. So, it's good for her though. Stove's doing good. I'm glad I didn't do a full fire because this wood is still damp. And uh, just this little one needs constant attention. And I just don't have the, the need for a larger fire uh, because it would be at least a half hour to 45 minutes before a full campfire would uh, get going well enough that it had cinders that it would self-perpetuate. No point in that, I just want some hot water. That's the temperature inside the bag that the thermometer was sitting in, with the bag sitting in the sun. That is the magical sound of boiling water. So this little fire is uh, really taking some time and some energy to keep it a blaze to boil the water. That wood is just wet. So what that tells me is this evening I'll uh, split some more wood and I'll let it dry out in the morning so that I can have fire tomorrow.
So as the uh, ramen soup is rehydrating, I was hearing running water. And this is uh, 150 feet from our camp. This is where we filter water when we need it. It's flowing. Little tiny waterfalls. Daybreak. Beautiful night. A little bit chilly. Just getting the fire going. That wood's wet, but I got a lot of small sticks on there. Yeah, we got a fire going now. <clears throat> Cotton ball, and petroleum jelly, and uh, twice as many small sticks as I normally would use and an entire pile of mediums, which is four times more than I would, I would normally use. And uh, just been tending it every two minutes. She caught, she's got a cinder bed going. You gotta put wood on way earlier than you would normally do because it has to dry out first. But that's okay, we've got a fire going. That water's gonna boil in a few minutes. Have some ramen soup, sandwich, share that with the dog, she'll be happy. About 26 degrees, I think. Ramen soup is in the small cup. Add a little bit more water to the coffee pot after it was boiling for the ramen soup. So it cooled down, and there's coffee grounds in it now, so that'll start perking here in about five or so minutes. The ramen will rehydrate. I'll be enjoying that. La Renard is hungry. She's eating her food. Fog on the lake. It's about 26 degrees, so there's frost on stuff. That's okay. It'll warm up today. It's supposed to be in the 60s today. So it won't take long once that sun breaks those trees. Beautiful up. Looks like it's going to be a low humidity day. I am warming my toes because they're kind of cold. No flame left. A bed of cinders keeping the coffee warm and warming my toes. Now you can tell the sun is up. I have placed my socks in direct light of the sun so they can dry out. Those are my day socks. I've got night socks on right now. And that tree is my neck size because my shirt is drying out. I left it out of the hammock area and uh, it got pretty damp so it's going to dry out here in about 10-15 minutes. I'll rotate it two or three times. Pretty cool, eh? Make perfect use of nature. I'm going to try to speed up the drying process on my socks. So I've got them on sticks over the cinder bed. Still in the sunlight, too. Now, La Renard and I are out for a morning paddle. We are in an alcove of the bay where we camp at, way upstream from when the water's at normal level. That's where we came from.
Yeah, here's another cove that we get to visit. We did not visit this one yesterday. Well, this is the fishing dock, and the water is only a couple inches deep in it now, uh, maybe three or four.